Good evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of our uh, team, uh, I would like to welcome all of you, all the dignitaries who are here, whether on the day or in, in the audience, uh, to this third Manohar Parikar uh, lecture, uh, memorial lecture series. Um, as we know, our beloved Manohar Bhai was always known for his intellectual heft, uh, for possessing the kind of political will that is necessary for reforms, and as well as, uh, most importantly, the administrative equity. And we are at a stage in our country where we require leaders with all three of with all these three important qualities. And why we need these three qualities is because the topic of today's uh, discussion and today's uh, uh, lecture is to do with the indigenization of uh, defense uh, requirements. And if we, if we anyone who has followed the history of uh, how we have been uh, supplying all the needs for our uh, defense and security establishment, it has largely been imports. And now if we have to make an India and ensure that uh, the country progresses, we need uh, political will, intellectual health and administrative acumen among our leaders. And uh, it is befitting that uh, this lecture series commenced uh, first uh, with uh, General Bipin Rawat, who was then the Chief of Defense Staff. And then we had uh, um, uh, Dr. Jai Shankar, uh, the Prime <coughs> Affairs Minister. And the third uh, lecture uh, this year, uh, we have uh, Lieutenant General Khandari. Uh, we also have with us uh, uh, our, our Excellency, the Governor of Goa, um, we are the Honorable Minister for Industry, and very soon we will also be joined by the Honorable Chief Minister. And we have a very, uh, a very distinct uh, uh, some, uh, an audience that that is that is uh, that likes intellectual discussion. And I'm sure over the course of next uh, two hours that we are going to spend together over here, we will learn a lot and uh, we'll go back with renewed vigor for uh, you know, India's book. His Excellency, the Governor of Goa, Honorable Chief Minister, Dr. Pramod Savan, Honorable Minister for Industry, Sri Mavin Budino, General Vinod Khandari Ji, Val Desai Ji, Dignities of the Days, Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of the Forum for Integrated National Security, Fields, I extend a warm welcome to all of you today. The Goa team of Fields is honored to be hosting the third edition of the Manohar Parikar Memorial Lecture scheduled today. It is a solemn day today since it is the death anniversary of late Sri Manohar Parikar, whom we admired and adored. The Manor Parikar Memorial Lecture is one of the flagship programs of FINS. FINS believes that the security of our country is the responsibility of each one of us and not only of the government and its various arms. We as citizens have to understand that we should be seized of all strategic developments around us which concern the safety and security of our fellow citizens and ultimately of our country. In the words of General Khandareji, we should develop a multi-domain security consciousness. Fins as a think tank is committed to espousing the cause of creating a strategic mindset through its various initiatives, maybe through intellectual gatherings or through discourses which act as a spark for initiating dialogues in the citizenry. The son of this pious soil, late Sri Manohar Parikar, whom we affectionately called Bhai, was a great supporter of the Finns philosophy. He believed in this organization to the extent that he would entrust us with giving, his crit giving him critical inputs, whether as a chief minister of the state or as the Raksha Mantri of our country. This patronage and trust in us was the bedrock on which we trade with a nationalist vision. We at Fins choose, chose the 13th of December as the National Security Day to remind the people of the dastardly attack on our democracy in 2001 when our parliament was attacked. It also happens to be our Bhai's birth anniversary. He always expected Finns to initiate, interact and influence discourses 
which further the strategic interests of this country. This fate led us to initiate the Manohar Parikar Memorial Lecture Series as a tribute to his passion and commitment to our nation's well-being. The previous two lectures, as Tulsidas Pai mentioned, were addressed by General Bipin Rawat, our first Chief of Defence Staff, and Dr. S. J. Shankar, the Foreign Minister of our country. Today we are hosting the third of the series. We are fortunate to have a distinguished gentleman, General Vinod Khandareji, who will share his experience and foresight with us as the keynote speaker. I will also like to share that Manor Bhai supported films to set up an academy on strategic studies. He had expressed his wish that it should be set up in his home state of Goa. We are steadily working towards fulfilling his wish and I am glad to mention that his successor Dr. Pramod Savan and his equally capable colleague like Mavin Godino Sarya have been equally supportive of the work the Finns has taken up. I once again welcome this August gathering and I wish you all a very good evening. Thank you Nitin for uh, so very well art articulating the purpose of uh, hosting this uh, uh, seminar for all of us. Uh, I now request uh, Advocate uh, Paul Desai, who is the Secretary General of Finns, to give a brief introduction on what Finns is and what are the activities it is. Good evening everybody. His Excellency Governor of Goa, Sridharan Pillai. Dr. Pramod Savan, Chief Minister of Goa, Mr. Movin Gudino, Industries Minister of Goa. Today's speaker, General Vinod Khandare, and others, dignitaries on the dais as well as in the auditorium. Much of the work which I am, I was interested to do, been done by my friend Nikhil Lavande. The name itself suggests, Finns is a short form. This is Forum for Integrated National Security. The concept with which we are working is that. The security of our country, of a, of a nation, any nation, cannot be thought <coughs> in compartmentalized manner. It should be integrated. As the world progresses, we find that it cannot be segregated. Internal security, external security, they are all interdependent one affects the other. So from that point of view, this forum has been started. It began in the year 2003. Initially, we were conducting awareness programs, but since 2014 onwards, the Finns has confined itself to the research activities. Our working is we can call it three sutri. Initiate, interact, and influence. We try to initiate the issues, topics related to security. We interact with experts. And we also see that whatever discussions or deliberations take place in the interaction, should be helpful in influencing the policies of the nation. See, this is an organization of, I would say, intellectuals, experts, professionals. We have collected a data of about 3,000 experts in the country still incomplete. We are working on it. And all the, with the help of all these experts, 
we try to conduct research in the projects or the programs or on the issues related to national security. FINS has identified about 14 verticals which are related to the national security of the country. Those verticals are right from defense policy, maritime security, cyber security to even governance. On all these issues, we try to conduct research on the basis of, uh, by uh, inducting various experts in this process. Therefore, what we do is, as I said, we don't conduct big programs, only accept this program as we have, we have been conducting because as it is said that it is a flagship program of FINS. But we conduct research or prepare papers, research papers by having thinkers meet, about 20-25 experts come together, discuss, deliberate and then come out with the research analysis of whatever topics will be do. In addition to this, we have been coming out with two regular publications. One is Finn's Bulletin. This bulletin is published twice in a month after every 15 days and it is well circulated. This goes to about more than 5,000 people all over the country and we send it through the emails. The other publication, regular publication I would say, is that of journal. This is a quarterly journal, research journal, FINS Diplomacy and Research, Diplomacy and Strategy, that is the title of this uh, uh, the uh, uh, the I issue that we come out and this is also sent to the experts all over the country. We try to do this by even getting in touch with the universities, other think tanks and with their help we conduct this research program. We have another very interesting program and that is of the interns. We engage interns just to encourage youth to participate in this process of security. And these interns are engaged, they are given topics, either we give them topics or if any intern chooses his topic, we ask him to do research. He is given a mentor, he is given guide and all these papers which we receive from them, they are also published. We can, uh, uh, the, all these uh, papers, etc., all whatever literature we have come out, you can go to, go to it on our website, finsindia.org. This is the website where all our literature is there, including the bulletins, all bulletins, etc. We also conduct roundtable conferences, dialogues with experts. So far, we have conducted about 17 webinars on different topics of national importance. The proposed subjects of research which we give to the interns, COD, we have created a COD desk. And from this, we create, we do research so far in COD also. Artificial intelligence, arms race between US and China, examining India's perspective. India and next security provider with the Indo-Pacific region, the increased maritime domain awareness of India and its rising opportunities. G20 and Global South, how India seeks to align their objectives this year. Indian foreign policy. These are some of the major topics wherein research is being conducted. We have 
made attempts to influence the <coughs> agency's concern or the uh, or the authorities. Recently, we were awarded a project by the Honorable Governor of uh, Himachal Pradesh, then Governor of Himachal Pradesh, to make studies about the border security of Himachal Pradesh. We had prepared a detailed report of that uh, uh, study and it, uh, it was submitted to the governor, then governor of uh, Himachal Pradesh. These are some of the major programs and the, and the uh, efforts that are being uh, conducted by the Finns for the purpose of doing research and also for initiating various topics which are related to the national security of our country. We try to integrate with us the experts in defense, public policy, maritime, intelligence like this and these experts are brought together in order to help in conducting the research in the field of national security. You can visit our website finsindia.org wherein you can get lot of information or whatever research work that has been done by the Finns. Thank you very much. Thank you sir for uh, introducing us to the whole concept of uh, Finns. Uh, I remember even before uh, Modi Sarkar took shape Somewhere in March 2014, before the elections itself took place in, in the country, we had in Goa itself uh, Sri Ajit Doval addressing a gathering of Finns. So uh, that is a kind of uh, uh, network that uh, that the organization has built over time. And we cannot discount the fact anymore uh, about the, org uh, the role that organizations such as Finns play in, in, in today's uh, scenario of country's architecture, economic as well as security. So just yesterday I was listening to the ambassador of India at UN who said that India is going to, the G20 events are going to be hosted in 56 cities of, of the country, which is the highest ever in the history of G20. The last was 14 cities that was touched by China. So this is the kind of government and uh, private sector and uh, you know civil society engagement that we are in and, and hopefully it serves us well in the years to come. I request uh, uh, Baldessa sir to kindly uh, honor uh, our uh, excellency the governor with a memento and convey our appreciation for gracing this occasion. Oh. I request His Excellency the Governor to kindly address the gathering. Distinguished guests and my dear friends, I am going to go to Rajboy and as per the schedule, departure time is 5.34. Brameshanda Swamiji and Goa Kabinav are waiting there. So that is why I am not in a position to deliver a speech here. Anyway, this traditional calendar, Hindu Kalagana, of course, day by day, such a concept. Such current days are disappearing from our Indian life. So this effort is excellent for the future of the country. And I congratulate the organizers of this function and uh, a welcoming Hindu Kalagana calendar. Our Chief Minister and our <coughs> Minister Movin are here. I am sure that they will uh, talk in detail and compensate my absence from here. I had occasion to see first time Dr. Manohar Parikar in 2002, 2002 or 2003, while I was the state president of Kerala BJP. The national executive was here in Panchi and uh, on that day I had occasion to see him. A Pakka gentleman. Public workers are concerned. There are 
two types of concepts always in the history. One is practical power politics. And on the other side, other side, our ideological politics, people's politics. In 1975, Jaya Prakash called it as people's politics. So based on Dharma, Dharma is supreme. And power politics is also, of course, part of that. And that is why if we search ourselves regarding the best political leaders seen by the last century, you can see Gandhi's name may be there, Jayaprakash Narayan's name may be there, but Gandhi is concerned after the freedom, he didn't take the membership of any political party. He kept away from proper politics. But if it was a question, the answer is that he is one of the greatest politicians ever seen by our country. Jaya Prakash Narayan is concerned socialist and power politics also. He actively participated. But uh, his life as a whole, if we analyze, in 1975, Samburna Vipav and the emergency declaration, etc., etc., are of course the champion of that movement was the Narayan. In 1977 election, he, his uh, party, the Nada party got power, people elected. Then all the people of India as a whole, the setup as a whole, requested him to be the Prime Minister of India. His answer was, no, I will serve the people, but I don't want any power. In 1948 also, Jawaharlal Nehru wrote a letter to him, Mr. Jay Prakash, you come and join with my ministry and uh, I'm prepared to appoint you as the Deputy Prime Minister of India and depicted him as the future Prime Minister of India also. A reply given by Jay Prakash Narayan is still in my memory. That is why when we think about the politics, my ideology, basic ideology, not a power politics, my basic ideology, Chief Minister's ideology, and our Bihar governor's ideology, that basic ideology we are depending on is same. From a childhood onwards, I am part and parcel of that ideology. You see, Arnold Toynbee once stated that Change in a society can be made by not by a mob, but a creative minority in a society. If you think about French Revolution, Communist Soviet Russia's uh, revolution, and of course, feudal struggle in India. Maximum number of people participated in that struggle, maybe less than 5% of our population. But they dedicated themselves for a cause. Many persons lost their life. But that 5%, I would like to say, they are the creative minority. In politics, such a creative minority should be there. I am not blaming anybody. And in one or two main ideologies we came across last century, Liu Shavoji has written a book, How to Become a Good Communist, Liu Shavoji's famous book. In other ideology, I am not a political party, but ideology I would like to say, there are code of conduct for another political party which ruled India. But as far as my basic ideology is concerned, there is no stipulation anywhere. Not only I confine to the present political sector, political party which is ruling India, we, through our mother organization, there is no stipulation anywhere written how to become a good public worker or a good soil say or what of me. So, life of the leaders, people are getting inspiration from that and through that process, 
a country can develop and uh, dharma is the basis that is why ishwar stated if dharma is there no need of a king this is our basic thing and when i think about manohar parikar i would like to say a politician with a difference regarding power politics he was a champ but at the same time ideological politics also equally was important and uh, our goa produced a national leader from here and the memories are with me due to lack of time i am not going to go to further anyway this moment two ideologies in the world failed in toto american system now they are suffering their children in the school they are fighting each other with weapon how many students lost their life we think about it the ideology as a whole now low, the ideological imbalance is the main problem in america now yes now american system capitalism or whatever maybe i am not going to that the other system in 1950s one third of the entire population was believed in the system russia china not political discussion going as a governor but i would like to say it is now where where that i will can anybody say authentically russian that particular party or its its counterparts in india why ussr system has failed in toto so these are things both systems are lost there's a vacuum that vacuum our indian system can is a substitute an alternative and that basic thing was represented by manohar parikar i am paying homage to him and thank you very much jai hind we have a mix us uh, our honorable the minister for uh, industries the government of goa shri movin budino sir uh, <coughs> may i request sir to kindly address the gathering the honorable chief minister of goa a young and dynamic dr pramod savant ji <coughs> secretary general of forum for integrated national security mr bal desai lieutenant general vinod pandare mr nikhil lavande uh, rear admiral menon uh, sadanand tanavde president of the bjp party distinguished Uh, Mrs. Allekar, distinguished uh, dignitaries of the day, ladies and gentlemen, it is always a privilege to speak on a personality, revered even after his death, whether in Goa or at the national level. For things done here as well as at the national level, all of us know this is the third memorial lecture. and i had the privilege of being at another lecture in bombay where also i was made to speak while remembering sri manohar parikar the intellectual that was there to see the intellectual capacity that he had which ultimately endured into his acts as the chief minister of goa as a very astute politician as one who administered the state with a iron hand as one who set new principles rolling and it is precisely because of that there was a integration of a different sort and in the minds of our honorable prime minister now sri narendra modi that time he said this integration from goa has to be done at the national level and what better way to do than ordaining him as the then defense minister of our country looking at 
the works that he undertook while paying homage to him in terms of development in Goa, in terms of launching good inclusive schemes for the citizens of our state, in terms of dealing differently. And when our party in power that time called itself a party with a difference, appearing to be a personality with a difference in the chair of the chief minister was obviously appreciated by one and all, commended by national leaders and as I said, culminating in him leading the nation as the defense minister. Simple as he was, I remember he used to wear, wear very simple things, in fact always wear sandals, not even dressing up properly and I remember the occasion when the American president visited India, he was wear, forced to wear a suit and be formally dressed, looking so different. And in spite of people at that point of time forcing him that he should dress like this always, he looks very good. He said, no, I want to be the common man. I want to be amidst the people. And here, <coughs> Finns is a very important organization which organizes lectures in his name. While we talk of this being the forum for national security, integrated national security. As we all know and we have to realize, for any state to progress, first of all we have to have a good law and order. Unless you have your house in order, unless you have your house in full control, every facet of society, whatever they may deal in, whatever they may be doing, whatever professions they may profess, unless you have that in your hand with a firm hand under total control, I don't think any state can make much progress. Whatever dreams you may have, they will not materialize. Similarly for a country, unless your defense is sound, and by defense, I mean the many facets of it, and the defense of our military, defense of our army, of our navy, of our air force, Everything has to be working like an integrated group. There are new challenges in the challenging world now. The way things are changing. You don't have need to have even a pilot sometimes in the, your plane to go and do an awesome job of destroying somebody. This is the age of the drones. And you have seen them, what is happening in Ukraine. What is happening in that part of the world, perhaps at the moment it is being used as an experiment by advanced countries, both of them fighting Russia and Ukraine. In this particular regard, I want Finns to apply their mind to a very, very important aspect. I for one shudder to think, with all of the advanced technology we have, ultimately in this age of information age, in this very modern technology being adopted, I shudder to think that if our satellites sometimes fail, if there is a space war, if people have ventured and gone that far to shoot our satellites down, everything will collapse. Where will be your defense line? We may have built nuclear bunkers. We may have assured protection with such an eventuality thinking of a nuclear holocaust. What about what will happen if it has enough importance been given to what can happen in space. I think being futuristic, this is one chapter which the Finns have to apply their mind. Apply, as you said, you have uh, 3,000 best brains working in tandem. You have to think of what can happen. I know India can never lag behind and under the astute leadership of our iconic Prime Minister, I know that we have, shot, we have had already shot down some satellites just for a test case. But are, is that enough? Are we fit enough to match the technology with some advanced country, perhaps like China or like uh, uh, who spend money secretly without anybody knowing or for that matter even America? Are we prepared? I am saying this because India is on the path to great progress. India is marching forward in every particular field, in science and technology, in R&D, 
in getting something new developed in our country we are not lagging behind the cost of sending a satellite in space is perhaps one tenth of it would cost any other advanced country how much of progress does that speak of at low cost you have got the best brain having the best material integrating it assembling it and using it even for the common man for the common good of the society for the people of our country does just need speak for awesome progress it is sometimes we it is sometimes we not realizing what is our own potential i for one look you know or sometimes at the individuals who have made progress in the world if you look at them most of them are indians indian brains again whether it is the nasa whether it is the space technology whether it is the top industrial companies whether it is the big giants functioning in the entire world they are nothing but indian brains but one becomes a bit satisfied when we have introduced reforms in our country when we have moved in a direction where we would be in due course creating atmosphere when they would be able to come and absorb themselves very positively in our own country have opportunities as we say there would there is going to be a reverse brain drain i am looking to those days and it is going to happen with the way our country is marching forward thanks to narendra modi again it's not that i am his fan i may be his fan but sometimes to speak realistically realistically and what is the fact it uh, it should be the norm we sometimes tend to mix everything in politics but what is happening around it's good to see similarly at this manohar par uh, Man manohar parikar lecture i also want to say we are learning more and more to respect our indianness we are learning more and more what are what are our roots we are learning more and more what is our culture we are learning more and more where india actually went down and now how it can integrate itself and become a vishwa guru leaders of the world and that is what we have to move forward to while we progress as humans while we move forward as individuals our scientific community is no less than any other scientist in the world we have to realize that when you look of the business community we are no less than any businessman in the world look at the people in the first list of forbes 50 most of them are indians i don't want to take names those creating wealth for our country look at those coming with innovative schemes they are indians look at those now winning oscars producing films even documentaries they are indians this is our time but we all have to integrate ourselves and integrate with the challenges before us integrating first our mind integrating as one society with the oneness and unity that is required as is rightly said we are a country a unity in diversity being so diverse yet we are so united i for one have the proud privilege of being a member of the gft council where we de deliberate we discuss we literally fight on so many issues but when it comes to taking decisions we have become one 99% accept one decision till today in the last 5 years we have taken all decisions by consensus which means we have the strength to be together even though we may be divided and that should be our thinking we should start thinking even more greatly as one country as one people about our great nation if our nation is really going to rise if we are going to move that high it is time we think of our country not of ourselves or our interests let our country be fast it is time perhaps remembering john f kennedy don't think what the country can do for you think what you can do for your country we let us all think what we are doing ourselves to strengthen our nation to strengthen the brotherhood to strengthen the love and affection amongst the citizens however diverse we may be different languages we may have different cultures we may have we may reside in even any part of the world but let us integrate as one people and in that direction i want to say 
that Manohar Parikar also was always in the forefront. While he and I had lot of differences, we, people used to say it is a love-hate relation. Like between two lovers, there were some of my friends, even in BJP, they tell me today, he loved you very much, suddenly what used to happen between you, you used to love him so much. But we used to realize what is really good for the state, what is really good for the thing. And I realized when he invited me to join his party, I with great hesitation, which was there previously, I decided to truly integrate with him and his party and today I am there in a party which I am proud to be because this party is progressing not only in my state. My leader at Delhi is doing so well. I for one am convinced that our nation is going to move even to greater heights than that we perhaps can't imagine. And therefore, I want to tell Finns, when you are also getting the best of brains to think of security, which is of paramount importance, think of space as well. Because that is one sphere perhaps we might not have as much applied our mind. Let there not be a day that we are well versed, we are prepared, everything on the ground, on our earth and something really goes badly wrong in space with our satellites, with our communication system. And it is more weaponized by the powers, the greater powers, which are there at present as greater powers. It is our bounden duty to make that research, be prepared for any eventuality, make us true leaders in every sphere, in everything that matters, and not found lacking in, in any quarter perhaps. And that would make a powerful nation. And as they say, this future century belongs to India. Truly it will belong. Let us not be lacking in anything. Let us not be lacking in using our human resources to the best possible results. Let us not be found lacking in using the best technology, in using our technology to not only further the interest of all institutions, but of our citizens at large, give the youngsters the opportunity. We are today a young nation, having a young population, use them to the maximum possible limits which they are capable, it will make our country great. Let us all move towards the, that situation. I once again pay my humble tributes to see Manohar Parikar and while remembering him, I hope his thoughts, his vision, his way of functioning will continue to inspire generations, inspire all of us to work even harder towards the better, uh, better good and a good uh, a futuristic goal for our state, for our country and for everyone around us. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you sir. Uh, those words uh, truly flowed from the heart. Uh, Mohan sir has one enviable reputation uh, is that he has spent uh, a long time as a contemporary of uh, Manor Bai in the assembly uh, in the you know, in the 25 year uh, uh, history of Manor Bai as an uh, as legislator. Uh, for a cricketer, uh, it's the 22 yards are the sacred uh, place to be. Uh, for Manohar Bhai, it was that assembly and we all have been regaled as a, you know, in his stint as a legislator and Mohan sir was there right throughout. It uh, doesn't matter on which side because, but it was always a close bond. Um, Mohan sir also has an important role today to play in terms of the topic of today's uh, discussion here, it is the Indianization of uh, Bharat's defense force or defense uh, requirements. And as an industries minister, uh, he has given his full support for all kinds of uh, industries in uh, you know who want to make it India and uh, export defense products to the rest of the world. Um, moving on, friends, uh, we are also we are highly privileged to have Amit Sas, uh, Honorable Chief Minister of the State, uh, here. Uh, his government today completes uh, four years. Uh, four years where a lot of projects that Manohar Bhai had initiated have been completed. Uh, and the vision of Manohar Bhai of uh, achieving a prosperous uh, Goa and a prosperous India have been uh, put in motion and uh, the overwhelming majority and the overwhelming support of uh, the government and the works received in the elections last year are a testimony to the amazing leadership skills of, of the one who succeeded uh, Manohar Bhai. Uh, without wasting any more time, I request our Honorable Chief Minister to kindly uh, address the gathering. Since century organized Kerala Indigenous Bharat, Indigenous of the Bharat Defence, Ajay Khasa Swayak, Ham Jamadi Hazarasat, Lieutenant General Vinod Khandari, Jen Ka Ekpa Khatir Ami Sagar Dar Aile. Thay Khatir Ham Third Way Ulo Chana, Ham Third Way Tanka Ulo Paagle. Khasa Karyakram Finns Century organized Kerala Bara Jaisai General Secretary of the Finns. Thay Jaley Mula Finns Ya Organisation Che Kam Ham Jamukhar Doorle. Ab Thay Ekke Sangpak Sutta Ite. फिंस काम 
हाजा पैली भाई आसाना गोय जे कर सोताले हाजा फुड़े तक कर गोय सरकार तो तेको पद्धति आसतलो खासा सुवाक मावीन गुदीन बाप जे भाई आनी डिफेन्स भाई आनी इनोवेशन भाई आनी टेक्नोलॉजी हा वेवेग विषय मावीन गुदीनो हाँ व्यवस्थित रिता विषय माडला तेर बाप मावीन गुदीनो बाप लवंदे व्यासपीठा आसा व्यासपीठा समोर हमारे पार्टी अध्यक्ष सदानश तानोड़े मैडम आर्लेकर जी जे टेबल कैलेंडर रिलीज के आटा कि गुरु पौर्णिमे चैत्र महीने जो सुरू जो निमित्त टेबल कैलेंडर ही हंगा रिलीज के बदल खासा ते खूब खूब अभिनंदन मनोहर भाई पर्रीकर हाँ आज पुण्यतिथि पुण्यतिथि निमित्त फिनसान और लेक्चर सीरीज हंगा फाटी तीन वर्ष घता हाँ मुद्दम याद करता मनोहर भाई के आवड़े टॉपिक विच इज एन इन्फ्रास्ट्रक्चर सायंस एंड इनोवेशन मनोहर भाई यादिस्त डिसेंबर खासा कर खीर तीन लेक्चर सीरीज वेगवेगे देश आ विदेश सायंटिस्ट भूगें खीर मोटिवेशन कर आज भी धर्ती ऑर्गनाइज करता हे फाटी तो बारह तालुक्या वर्चुअली स्टूडेंट्स कनेक्ट कर सो डेट द सायंस ये तदी रुचे मैक्जीम स्टूडेंट्स सायंसी कट्रेक्ट जाए पता कि मनोहर भाई के खासा आकर्षण ज्या सब्जेक्ट सायंस सब्जेक्ट आशि मनोहर पर्रीकर इंटरनेशनल स्कूल ऑफ लॉ ये युनिवर्सिटी सुरू कर पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वो स्पेशल कोर्स युनिवर्सिटी नावान सुरवत खासा कर मनोहर भाई नावत युनिवर्सिटी सुरू के प्रोजेक्ट आसा इन्फ्रास्ट्रक्चर बाबी संगता सग खबर आ मनोहर इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदीजी हाँ हस्ते इनोग्रेट के वन ऑफ द लॉन्गेस्ट ब्रिज इन गोवा विच इज एन मनोहर पर्रीकर ब्रिज एट अ काणकोण हमें हा ब्रिजा इनोग्रेशन के मनोहर भाई सदांत सतत्या भूगे सतत्या नवीन नवीन तरी शिके पैशा अड़चणी खाती खुद भूगे फाटी उच्च नहीं मनोहर पर्रीकर स्कॉलर स्कीम आज पद्धति चलता आशनल इंटरनेशनल लेवल भूगें शिकपा खीर सरकार कड़ी सपोर्ट मेचो मनोहर पर्रीकर स्कॉलरशीप ही स्कीम सतत्या हजा फुड़े अशाच पद्धति ती चालू उतली भाई की स्वप्न इन्फ्रास्ट्रक्चर सोशल सेक्टर या दोनों सेक्टर सतत्या याद दौरता भाई मटलो गाय गो ऑपोजिशन लीडर गोयो मुख्यमंत्री आ डिफेन्स ये सतत्या गोयकार सगैंक सतत्या याद जता बरबर मैं खूब खोस भोगता फीस हमें डिफेन्स वो सब्जेक्ट घेन तुण्यतिथि निमित्त हे लेक्चर एरेंज के खीर खासा करूँ तेज खूब खूब अभिनंदन इट इज माय प्लेजर टू बी द पार्ट ऑफ द इनॉग्रल ऑफ द लेक्चर ऑन द इंडिजिनियस भारत डिफेन्स स्टेटस द प्रॉस्पेक्टस एंड चैलेंजेस बाय लेफ्ट जनरल विनोद खंडारी अवर गवर्नमेंट इज कमिटेड टू एनकरेज द सेल्फ रिलायंस इन द डिफेन्स मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन द कंट्री एज अ पार्ट ऑफ द आत्मनिर्भर भारत एंड मेक इन इंडिया इनिशिएटिव टू अचीव दिस वी नीड टू ट्रेन द मैन पावर and we must focus on building the competent individuals at the operational level to deploy direct review and update the resource effectively the quality of our workforce is essential to the effective utilization of technology and services goa with its advanced infrastructure and tailor made demographic locations has strong prospects of becoming the logistic hub of india it is already the housing of the maritime cluster and the national level steering committee of the ministry of the micro small and medium entrepreneurs have approved to setting up of the common facility center in verna this cluster is likely to generate the additional 3000 job in state <coughs> the goa's infrastructures including air water and road connectivity provides the strategic advantages to the india's defense industry The naval base in Goa is strategically important for the Indian Navy, providing the forward operating base for its ship and submarine to monitor as a patrol the western coast of India and the Arabian Sea. It is a proud moment for us that the Ministry of Defence has signed the contract with the Goa Shipyard Limited for the construction of eight fast patrol vessels for the Indian Coast Guard. 
This contract will boost the India's indigenous shipbuilding capacity and increasing the employment opportunities in the sector and supports the government to resolve to making the India's defense manufacturing hub. Goa's access to shipyard and the micro, small and medium entrepreneurs engaged in manufacturing the shipping components make it the ideal location to transform itself into a premier <coughs> defense hub. The state striving to start up the ecosystem supported by the conducive environment and network and momentous for the defense sector has the potential to become the hub of the innovation and entrepreneurship providing the boost to the defense sector in the coming year. Industry academia interactions can play the crucial role in the focusing the innovations and research in the defense sector. The collaboration between the industry and academia will uh, help in the bridging the gap between the theoretical knowledge and practical applications leading to the development of the cutting edge technology. In conclusion, we welcome the defense related activity and services to contribute to our nation's defense force. With the unique st strategies, the Goa is also the potential to become the place of the defense manufacturing, creating the significant economic opportunities and strengthen the India's defense capability. Thank you. Puradikta Munorbhai Parikaran Yad Karta Astana Satatya Tenjanik Goya Kelle Kaam Yami Lokancha Mukha Dorokar But Ek Muddha Mun Saltano Ki Bhain Suru Kelle Social Sector Andi Bhain Suru Kelle Infrastructure Goya Bapti Tiyaz Puddhatit Goya Samanya Tya Samanya Muncha Parit Paupa Khatir Ami Sadodi Karriere Vastane Khari His Bhaik Sraddhanjali Asa Deo Bare Kuru Thank you, sir. Uh, may I now request uh, Utpal Parikar to kindly introduce the speaker, uh, the keynote speaker for the day, and also uh, speak about the book that is going to be launched. Good evening, everyone. Honorable Chief Minister of Goa and uh, Honorable Industry Minister. Also, we have General Kandare and Members of Finns and all of you. I have been asked to introduce General Kandare and today's topic. But before I do that, I am uh, reminded of one saying by one Athenian, a Greek, almost more than 2000 years back. Societies which separates its warriors and scholars end up doing its thinking by cowards and fighting by fools. When I heard this for the first time, I wondered whether maybe he had India in mind when he made this statement. Because we know that Greek and India had a lot of civilizational contact even 2000 years back. The way our some of our leaders lend themselves to be part of narrative set by some other foreign countries in foreign lands or way we as a population go gaga over some foreign country giving a award to one of our movies or a song in that movie. And it's a good achievement but somehow I think like do we still seek validation from the western world? We got invaded and colonized and got our political freedom in 47. But sometimes think, I think that some of our population in our mind, the decolonization has still not taken place. But today we are lucky because we don't only have a fine warrior, but we have a learned scholar in General Khandare who is going to give the memorial lecture. I first got introduced to uh, General Khandare when my father was the defense minister. And uh, knowing my father, if he introduced someone from the government to me, that means that person was doing something good for the country. Otherwise, there are so many people he has interacted in the government and otherwise. But rarely he would call me specifically to introduce me to someone. 
So I got introduced to Dr. General, uh, sorry, General Khandare then, and I had also pleasure of receiving a book he has written uh, on data security a few months back. General Khandare is an infantry officer. We might say artillery is the god of war, but most of the work on the battlefield, I think the infantryman does it. And uh, he has been highly decorated. He has Param Vishistha Seva Medal, Ati Vishistha Seva Medal. He has also a gallantry Sena Medal for infiltrating a terrorist group and neutralizing more than 17 terrorists. One of the events when my father was defense minister, which we remember, which kind of was a turning point in uh, India's defense, I would say, posture, was surgical strike. Many I know that uh, the core commander in Kashmir, General Dua had mentioned that on the same day when my father went to Kashmir after the uh, Patan Kot attacks, he had told that we need to do something and he uh, to prepare for that. Uh, and uh, But final decision was taken by the Prime Minister. And I always wondered, when I mean, everything went good, there was no casualty on our side, but what if the operation had got botched? I mean, the opposition asked for the proof of surgical strike. You would have got a proof of surgical strike, but not a good one at that. And so how did Prime Minister to, the, took this decision? It was a tough decision, so anything could have gone wrong. We could have lost our soldiers, we could have got captured, tortured. But how did Prime Minister do such a bold decision? He could take that decision because he had the confidence in the what armies and the defence forces are capable of doing. And that was there because that surgical strike we all know because the government showed guts to own up to it. But even before that, there were many surgical strikes not announced. One of them was in 2000 when more than 26 Pakistani soldiers were eliminated because they had done some mischief one day before. And that was done under General Khandari's by his men. He has served multiple times in Kashmir since he was captain in the army. He has served in Chushul, Eastern Ladakh, which we know because of the, the tussle we are having and we are successfully putting our resistance to the TLA. And he has served in LOC also. I could go on reading, he has been DG, when my father was a defense minister, he was DG DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency. And he has been currently his advisor, principal advisor to the MOD. I could read a lot of his achievements, but those achievements which I read will be very small compared to the things which I cannot tell you. Or maybe good general himself will not able to tell you because of national defense. But I can assure you, no privy to some of them, that if you come to know some of the things which he cannot tell you because of national security, you will be, the, in, there won't be enough thank or gratitude you will have for his service. You will be all proud to have people like General Khandare guarding and uh, the country so that we can stay here peacefully. Now coming to today's topic, indigenization. I would say why do we need that? We can get good weapons, sophisticated <coughs> weapons from our friends from the West or East. Well, today, after almost 70 plus years, the Europeans have brought us back on the cusp of another world war. With all their sophistry, we have again at that cusp. Last time when there was a world war, Unfortunately, we were a colony of one of the European countries. So our people were sent in millions 
or legs to fight these wars. Today we are an independent country and I am proud that our country and government has taken an independent stand regarding the war going on in Europe. There was kind of an initial, if you have seen, a narrative being said that, oh, India is buying oil from uh, Russia. And there was, uh, the government was, the narrative in the media was created to pressurize the government to take a stand, not, not independent stand. But still our government could stand independently and most of the global south has stood independently. Dr. Jayashankar, I think mean, uh, it is important to stand in independent. Uh, one of the, uh, I can't recall, it was I think foreign minister of uh, Napoleon. He had said, one thing you cannot do with a bayonet, that chaku you put uh, in front of the gun, is to sit on it. And currently we see, without going into the politics, lot of European leaders are just trying to do that instead of calling for the peace. But we are calling for that peace and we are making a independent foreign policy. And to do that, indigenization is very important. If you see the Ukraine-Russia war, it has been, although there is a lot of things, uh, propaganda in uh, media, news, it has been war of attrition. Russia, in that the peak of the war, and general you will know better, uh, uh, launched like uh, fired 80,000 rounds of artillery <coughs> and the Ukraine answered with 8,000 and uh, it, this is going on f for almost a year. If we hypothetically uh, go to uh, like a POK and all, we need to have an indigenous industry which can support such kind of uh, we can uh, support us and we cannot rely on outsiders. So indigenization is very important and uh, uh, we are all here to listen to General Khandare on this topic. Before we, uh, General can give his lecture, I would uh, just, we will be having a book release. It has been, uh, we know that uh, Nitin Gokhale had written a book on my father Manohar Parikar. It has been translated by Arajana Joshi ji. It's called Manohar Parrika Sadi Rani and Uccha Vichar Sahib. So we will have that uh, book released now at the hands of uh, Honorable Chief Minister and uh, General Khandare. I will also request uh, the one who has translated the book to come and speak. request uh, General Khandare to uh, please uh, give the memorial lecture. Thank you. Jai Hind, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Chief Minister Savanji, other distinguished guests on the dais and of the dais, I take this moment as a proud privilege to be standing in front of you on the occasion of our revered late Honorable Manohar Parikar ji and uh, I owe a lot to him in terms of what we could do for the service of the nation and it is our fortune that Sri Manohar Parikar ji came to Delhi, became the Defence Minister and also a fortune that he selected a team of his and with <coughs> that team he was doing a lot of good for the nation and again it is my proud privilege to have been in that particular team. 
it is also creditable to see films having continued with the same zeal, zeal and enthusiasm celebration of what our esteemed leader did and the vision is not being allowed to get diluted it is extremely important to continue meeting and fulfilling the dreams of a person who has left us Sri Uppal Parikar was very kind and generous in his introduction about me. I can, in my brief association with Sri Parikar, just a few years, I can also give out a lot of things, but many moments are prized position for most of us and I would like to keep them like that. But at the same time, the topic which has been given to me is extremely important and that was his vision. And Finns has worded the topic so well about Bharat defence, the indigenization, the status, prospects and challenges. Each word has a lot of meaning in that. The first part when we say Bharat defence, I want to clarify here that Bharat Defence doesn't necessarily pertain only to the Ministry of Defence. It is the defence of Bharat and in which every citizen is responsible. So if indigenization is a campaign or an initiative which has been launched and that too with the vision of some great leaders of this country, each citizen has to perform the kartavya of becoming self-reliant. The nation has to become self-reliant in many domains, multiple domains. A nation can retain its sovereignty provided we have economic power, we have political stability, you have human resource quantitatively and qualitatively strong and relevant, which is contemporary. We have to have energy security, water security, food security, agricultural security. I deliberately mention these separately because food has a different dimension and agriculture has a slightly different dimension which is connected to industry. So the industrial part, technological part and now these days what is getting added is the environmental security as well. These are particularly relevant when we look at our identified adversaries. I have specifically said identified adversaries that is China and Pakistan. But one has to be strategically conscious that in statecraft and in geopolitical interests those who pose to be your friends today may not necessarily be your friends. So you have to be again on your own and in our history we have seen those who pose to be friends have become transactional especially when there was a crisis. During 1947-48 we were fighting the raiders in Kashmir and also carrying out various operations in different parts of the country in the bid to integrate the various princely states with inherited weapons and technology and ammunition which we had got from the British and those were the remnants of World War II military hardware. In 62 we suffered badly and that kind of trauma continues with us that that kind of a defeat was just unacceptable. And we realized that whatever little help we were getting was a bit too little and too late. And that too from foreign countries who had their own access to grind. 1965 was another moment where it was not only the deficiency of military hardware which came up, but also problems related to food security came up. The Prime Minister had to go public and say, that he as the Prime Minister would eat once a day 
and he requested the citizens to at least have a fast once a week. That shows how difficult it is for a country to fight if you are not self-sufficient in food. We went into a lot of Soviet equipment because we had no choice. It was a compulsion with us. And today, when people say that the balance has tilted towards the Soviet inventory, the present day generation has to understand that there was no choice with the military but to opt for that. Technologically, it may have been a little inferior, but our human resource was so superior that we could make miracles happen with that kind of a technology. So that is the point where I bring human resource security also, whether it is at the lowest level or at the highest level. Qualitatively, we have to improve. Degrees are a thing of the past. Along with degrees, we need skills. And those contemporary skills again come up in the Atmanirbhar campaign. I mentioned about industrial and technological security. If we are dependent and we are dependent on various nations, no nation will part with its best technology. You will get at least two or three notches below and you have to make do with it and you are not sure whether your adversaries are being given a notch higher than that. So we have to be clear what technology we need and it has to be customized peculiarly for our requirement. There are naval officers here in the August gathering. They would support my version when I say that whatever naval equipment or sensors are manufactured by the West and they try to dump it on us, the condition of water in the Mediterranean or in the Atlantic is much different from the waters here. So that's the point that we have to come back to. Atmanirbhar is the only way out, no other way out. So when we come to the issue of what is the status of Atmanirbhar initiative, it is just a beginning, it is a journey, it has started and it cannot be a one-man show. It has to be a team effort. Each and every individual in this country is involved in Atmanirbhar campaign either as a designer, as a developer, as a producer, as a consumer, as an investor or as an exporter. This is an entire chain. Without this chain fructifying, the campaign cannot be successful. Those in uniform may feel that military hardware is only meant for them. That's not true. If we are to utilize the technology which is meant for the military with civil and vice versa, with slight amount of differences, the scales of consumption increase, so the cost comes down and the profitability increases. That is the same thing which was done by the Americans, same thing being done by the Chinese, what they call as civil military fusion is exactly what needs to be done. Fusion is one part. I think time has come for integration. Unless we integrate the results of technology which is available in the civil domain and what is available in the military domain, the progress will become lopsided. There are lots of lessons to be learned. <coughs> It's not bad even to learn from your own adversary. There are many things which we have seen happening across the border in China. They have managed their funding concepts very well. What is given out in the budget in case of China for the defense budget and every year practically they keep increasing the budget by 7 to 10 percent at times even more. And that is what is the disclosed budget. But they have means of funding and adjusting their budget in a manner 
the border area infrastructure, infrastructure which China creates, most of it is funded by the provincial budget. In our case, it is the defense budget, mostly. The military education, which is provided to Chinese people in uniform, men and women, a large amount of it gets funded through the educational budget. You know, these are ways of trying to see how research and development gets funded more. So jointly, civil and military have to go ahead for Atmanirbhav initiative as well. I agree with all that has been said by the Honorable Minister, Honorable Chief Minister, Honorable Governor also, that we have talent, we have tremendous amount of potential. It's only a question of synergizing to get the best possible impact. All of us have to contribute, but the government has taken a lead. The government's intent is very clear. What has the government done? In the last few years, in 2016, the defense procurement policy of 2016, which our revered Manohar Parikar ji was instrumental in putting together and he had to face a lot of not protest or angst, I would say, but he had to work very hard to get that document out. He realized that there was a lot of pulling and pushing in different directions. There wasn't any one single body of the people who were working in the defense sector, especially in the private sector. So he got the people together and he said, why don't you come and create a body? And that is how Society of Indian Defense Manufacturers, SIDM, got established with his initiative. And at least now, you have one place to talk to. And when I went to Nigeria leading a delegation, I took the public sector people, also representatives from the SIDM. And when we made presentations to the Nigerian government, it was both public and private sector talking together, giving the best possible solutions which India had to offer Nigeria. So again, the point comes up, work together, work as a team and develop the nation together. After that 2016 document, the government went ahead, learning from various lessons as we travelled on that journey and defence acquisition procedure of 2020 came up. That's yet one more step. The kind of changes that have come up where foreign direct investment by direct route 74% has come in, the policy decision of the government that DEF Expo which happened in Gandhinagar, foreign entities were not given any place to display their wares, it was only Indian companies which displayed their wares, which was a very big signal. A certain percentage of the budget has been set aside to buy from private defense manufacturers. Such kind of segregation was never done. Our imports have reduced. At one stage, for some weird reason, we used to pride ourselves by saying, just importer. That's not something to be proud of, but we had no other option at that time. Now we are not only reducing our imports, but we are increasing our exports. You go to the MOD website and you see how we are increasing our exports, <coughs> but the hunger is still alive in us that we want to export more and more. The Prime Minister gave a vision as a part of the $5 trillion economy that he is looking by 2025, he wants defense exports to reach $5 billion worth. It is still far off, but the pace at which we are moving is quite good, quite healthy. What all have we tried to indigenize? It is a huge range of things that we have indigenized and we are continuing to increase the indigenous content whether it is a tank, whether it is a artillery gun, whether it is missile, BrahMos missile, anti-aircraft missile, submarine ships, all-terrain vehicles, software-defined radio, you name a thing and we have gone full pelt into that and gradually we are increasing the 
indigenous content both by, both by cost as well as component. For the first time in these 75 years on 15th August at Red Fort when the 21 gun salute was to be given, the gun salute was given by the Indian artillery gun manufactured by DRDO, Tata and Bharat Forge. It has taken us 75 years but there is a lot of hope now because with this artillery gun 155mm ATAX as it is known, we will be able to transform our entire artillery with 155mm guns which is an extremely good achievement and it doesn't stop there. We are already getting orders from foreign countries where they want these guns. Brahmos missiles we are already selling to Philippines. Saudi Arabia is also looking at our weaponry as well as wanting us to establish ammunition factories there. Sri Lanka wants the same thing. There are many countries which uh, have desired to collaborate with us either as customers or co-partners. We invited 53 African defense ministers during the DEF Expo in October and now uh, by the end of this month there are army chiefs from African nations coming to Pune and they will again give out what is their wish list, what do they want to buy from us. <coughs> the more we manufacture, the more we introduce in our armed forces, the more we will be able to export. And when we export, it becomes a relationship of lifetime. Take an example, you sell a rifle to any country you remember it's not a one-time sale because the weapon has been sold once but the ammunition will go every year. So that is the kind of dependence or that is the kind of relationship that gets established and this particular campaign continues to move ahead. There are plenty of things which are given in open source media as regards the status is concerned. I would like to move ahead due to paucity of time on to what are the prospects and what are the challenges? <coughs> Other than the exports, there is a large amount of inventory which has to undergo change. And that is right from a fifth generation fighter aircraft to a submarine, to a strategic submarine, to an aircraft carrier, to tanks, light tanks. There is a prospect and that is where a large number of startups have come and they are being engaged by the Ministry of Defence under various programs. Earlier DRDO was the one which was only engaging in the Technology Demonstration Fund which was a sizable amount but we realised that there are young startups, young university students or pass outs who want to do much more. They have knowledge, they have commitment. And because the ecosystem was not right, they were all falling into the lap of foreign companies and their solution we were then buying at 50 times the cost. So that is when the IDEX scheme was launched by the Ministry of Defence and the IDEX scheme was essentially for these young youth. During DEF Expo and during Aero India, a lot of MOUs have been signed, a lot of encouragement has been given to these startups. In Delhi, in an event which was named Swavlamban, most appropriately called Swavlamban, Indian Navy threw open 75 challenges for indigenization which the Prime Minister launched himself in the month of June and within three months of that, the Prime Minister in Gandhinagar opened up another 75 challenges for defence space. What is defence space? So far everyone has heard only of ISRO talking about outer space. But now we realise that ISRO cannot be left open where they get targeted by various sanctions if something goes wrong. 
So that is when a parallel structure has been created and defence space which is meant for defence has been opened up to the private industry which in October 20 the Prime Minister himself inaugurated online or rather October 21 and he had about seven private entrepreneurs with whom he shared the stage and he told them, okay, go ahead, create an ecosystem for space to be utilized. Many people have possibly missed this out. I want to just allay your fears that things are moving in the right direction. And the first launch by a private entrepreneur that's a startup has already happened. Space have to, has to be kept secure. At the same time, space has to become an energizing factor for national growth and security. Launch on demand is something where even if our satellites are knocked down, we should be capable of launching satellites immediately. It may sound simple, it is not. You need solid fuel rockets to put satellites in orbit, different kinds of orbits. And we are already working towards that. Different types of payloads have already been worked out. But then what are the challenges? There are still certain components which are critical and we do not have the know-how for those. So what do we do? That is where strategic partnerships which are not spoken of openly have to be entered into. A nation which has to keep its interests safe should not be talking everything openly. So there are strategic partnerships which are done again under the ambit of strategic autonomy. So India is quite reluctant and wisely so to get into strategic alliances. But strategic partnerships are extremely important because those will fill the voids that we have and as we keep filling those voids, we will keep getting stronger and stronger and soon because of the talent that we have, the commitment that we have, we shall be able to become strong self-reliant and when a country becomes strong that is when it can exercise leverages over rest of the world in any case the indian image is so good that even when we are not so strong number of countries want to engage with us and that is the plus point that we have i would have loved to go on and on but the paucity of time i would like to conclude here in the end i would Remember Sri Manohar Parikar once again, I would thank Honorable Chief Minister, Honorable Governor, Honorable Minister who is here or rather who just left uh, for their gracious presence for my uh, talk and a very big thank you to Finns for having given me this opportunity to talk to you and a very big thank you to the audience also. Jai Hind.